just a little darker. Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. I'm Rick O'Shea with Castle Craft Furniture. I'm finishing my masterpiece. Well, today I want to show you how to build this awesome studio easel for painting. Special thanks to Four Eyes Furniture, Chris Salamone. I appreciate the inspiration. Let's get started building. So now I'm going to start cutting out the legs after I measured. The back leg should be 41 inches and the front leg should be 31. Even sped up, it seems really slow. In fact, the saw just happened to be the perfect length from the saw blade, so I just pulled the blade out and cut it. No stop block needed, the saw was the stop block. And I ripped them down to an inch and a half. The front legs get two and a quarter, but everything else in the entire project is an inch and a half. So here I am ripping some boards down to an inch and a half. And I'm drilling a hole about three quarters of an inch down from the end in the center. And I'll show you why later. Not only are we going to use that to join for some of the pieces, but we're going to do something else. But here I am marked my uh, cutouts for my rails. And I'm cutting the dados out here. I was way too lazy to get out the dado blade for just these few things. and I cut some out for the front, which is these pieces here. So the back gets two stretchers and the front gets one stretcher, but I cut two just for the glue up and you'll see why now. You see how I laid the board there, just kind of keeping it square. So that helps keep it square and clamping up and gluing it now. This is the front piece. Here's the back leg. Now I made this jig, and this is why we drilled the, the circles three quarters of the way up, because then I can put a knob on it, and we can cut out half circles. So this jig is basically a T-track cut into a board. Uh, I have a T-track bit on my router. So you'll see that we'll do the half circles on the front, and I do that to almost all the pieces in the project. And rounding over the edges, of course. And since this is an art easel project, I didn't care about the burn marks on the cherry. I really need to replace my saw blade, but, you know. Who can afford fancy things like saw blades? And this is important. I used a Forstner bit, the half inch, to drill out a little bit of the hole through the top in the back. And the reason why is because when I put the screws in, I want to hide the heads so I can fit the piece in and then pop the heads out more. So here I am assembling the, the base just some quarter inch bolts and some washers and lock nuts. I had to put some washers in between because my measurements weren't the greatest. Doesn't matter, washers work to fix the problem. Going with the flow, man. So I screwed in the chain so that was exactly 20 inches between the two rails from front to back. At some point I may put a shelf there with hinges. I haven't decided yet though. Of 
course, I had to tighten the bolts. I couldn't just leave them hand tightened. And tighten them up. Perfect. Now, I clamp the top of the mass, the, the sides of the mass together so I can measure and get a better measurement this time of what's needed in between. So now I laid out some boards, some scrap boards on my table and I made them square, made sure they were square. And here's an interesting thing. I took a three quarter inch portioner bit and I put it in just enough to cover the head of the T-track bit that you see on the left. And now I'm going to check and see if it fits all the way down, and it does. So I'm going to put it on both the front and the back side here. Uh, that way I can rip a quarter inch uh, T-track between the two spots. So I didn't capture the footage of me ripping the bit of a quarter inch all the way down, so I just pretended. That's why you don't hear the router. I know, I'm a fake. Okay. So here we go. I'm Plop it down in that center hole. Just rip it all the way. Rip it good. Do, 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 do. So now I'm gluing up the mast. I put those cowls through the planer to make them a little bit thinner than the piece of cherry. That way they're almost flush with the tops of the mass but just a little below. I didn't bother doing any actual joinery. I'm gonna glue them and screw them. Yes, more screws. Throwing some screws in. I think I've only got like eight screws in the whole project two four for the uh, four for the chain and then you know eight for this uh, piece here that's 12 I can't add who needs math when you can do woodwork <laughs> and now I got a the, the mast piece here which is just a t-track I ripped a piece of cherry um, for the t-track so cherry is on the sides and the the center piece of the mast and the rest of the entire piece is made with pine that I had laying around, some reclaimed pine. But you don't really want to cut T-tracks and pine. It's got to be a hardwood. Otherwise, it's just going to fall apart on you. So now I mounted it. As you can see, I pulled the screws towards the end, and then I pushed them in to get them in the groove. And it's kind of hard to wiggle the thing around, but you can eventually get it to slide around. <clears throat> Take some finesse. There we go. Okay, so I'm setting where the blade starts and stops because I'm going to cut a, a drop groove in it. And this is just for the back piece for the uh, tilt mechanism. So I stop when I get to where I want to. And now I'm going to go over to the router and put it in the same spot and make that pretty. I think I took off a bit more than I should have in the first pass. I should have done this in multiple passes. And I'm gluing it up. I made sure it was far enough away from the back that I could get a knob in there without banging on the canvas or whatever art you're putting on there. Gluing that up. Now we're gonna make the top mast, so the uh, top mast uh, holder. So I'm gonna drill my quarter inch screw in the center piece. Actually, this is for the back. My bad. And it's going to hold the piece that allows it to tilt and move. And I, I had put glue on there too. So, okay. 14 screws. And here's that back piece that handles the tilt. I'm just 45ing the edges. So it's kind of rounded. I did two of them just in case I didn't make it the right length. And cleaning up the edges with the sander. Rounding them over. They're too thin. And I just put a lock nut on that. 
And then I've got a eye hook, quarter inch bolt, and a knob so I'd have a way to hold it on both sides. And of course fender washers. I dropped two on the table. How rude. Waiting for the glue to dry. Glue to. So now I am ripping the piece that goes to the top holder for the mast. And I glued that small piece on there so it'd be at a, at a 45 degree angle. 90 degree angle. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. So it'll sit right on the uh, key track. Waiting for the glue to dry. Waiting for the glue to dry. Okay, so now I'm measuring out my bottom mast holder. Trying to get it directly in between the two sides of the mast. Trimming that. It's weird watching yourself on video, especially at double speed. Boy, I see it quickly. My glue dries in 20 seconds flat. Waiting for the glue to dry. We need to get like a death metal band to do that. Waiting for the glue to dry. And I've cut my centerpiece. I marked it. I don't just cut willy-nilly, drill holes willy-nilly. I, I, I tried to widen it a little bit too. So here we go. Perfect fit. I'm gonna put a, a rail on top of it, but I wanted it to be removable because um, you're gonna get paint on it. And I thought maybe I'd cut some channels in it later and see if it would hold the canvases better or put some heat in it or something of that nature. So yeah, 14 screws, I can't count. Maybe 16 at this point. Someone wanna give me a running total? <laughs> Curious to know how many. So there we go. Beautiful. And she's done, except for that glue drying on that back mast. I left it in there for a while. Put my bolt in. And that's why we glued that little piece on the side of that, because now we can straighten it out. So here's the final picks. So this is my first video, so take it easy on me. Go lightly. I, I had fun making this for you. And Hopefully you'll make one even better than mine. You might actually measure and use less screws. <laughs> we can only hope. Have fun, take care, and good night.